Super. Super. Bier. Well, we are back. It's your lovable baby boy, Brank, here with episode 72 of Super BS Gamescast, a potty, a potty cast. It is a potty cast Podcast. nowadays. A podcast about video games, mostly. I'm joined by, who, who is it here today? You know, I'm just, I just want to be myself today. I think I'm just going to go by the name of uh, Jank. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's what we all know you as. Well, Jank, I... Just simple jank i want you to hide this episode just from me Maz. simple jank okay just just simple simple jank as Sim- we will call you jank, uh please uh the the winner of all the academy awards in uh tropic thunder simple jank <laughs> um and uh that movie holds up real well um i i want you to hide this episode from me Maz, and your papas okay because we're about to take you down to Bonersville, USA, population <laughs> master chief. Now, my virgin eyes were too virgin to even watch shows as scintillating and titillating as Ooh, what you're about to talk so about. Dirty. So <laughs> please uh, regale us, not explicitly, because we we got kids, we got babies listening to this show. Uh, please regale us with this just X-rated TV show that you've been watching. Uh, so this is from Halo, the television series. Have you Halo? Had a, yeah, what? So you have not had a chance to catch any of this. Uh, I am uh, blessed and fortunate enough that no, I'm not going to waste my time watching the Halo TV series. Okay, perfect. All right, so this season, it's already been renewed for a second season, so I guess they can kind of like make as many errors as they want in this first season. But this first season is supposed to be, from what I understand, the buildup to the fall of Reach. It's okay, the build up. is that when he, he j- goes downtown um, to all the rest of Reach? Because we know that... Halo is actually a baby making machine, as I've heard baby from this uh, recent episode. So there's this uh, this girl that was kidnapped by the Covenant when she was younger because she has the ability, like in Halo Wars, so they show like humans can interact with the uh, Covenant objects or whatever. Uh, so okay. she has this ability. Master Chief has this ability. She goes. To, she's allied with the covenant and she goes oh i want to go i'm gonna go kill the demon which is master chief so they send her on this spy mission she ends up slaughtering a bunch of unsc people but then in the process she decides she wants to be good and she falls in love with the master chief who by the way has his helmet off 45 minutes in every episode so we just we we get maybe like two or three minutes of master chief with his helmet on i'm just Um, glad that it sounds like the show's staying really true to the game i mean i'm normally really really used to chicks wanting to be with the chief that's most of the game so anyways he like walks into a room one day and like you see in their eyes there's like both of them have some barry manilow playing in their head and chief is like get it on what is this feeling what is what's happening what's happening in my no-no zone and he uh no (laughs) and he walks over and they kiss and they look at each other Man, that was weird, but I kind of like it. And she says, I kind of like this too. And they kiss again. And then all of a sudden, she's taking her clothes off. And Chief is like, I got all the tinglys there. And then uh, he's taking his clothes off. And next thing you know it, they're in bed. And they're doing things. They're doing things that I had to ask my parents about because I had no idea what I was watching. Mommy and, and Daddy, uh, what are they doing to each other? This yeah. is because uh, you normally have little children watching the uh, Halo TV series, right? <laughs> Made ex- for children. Exactly. I was just, it was so confusing. But uh, yeah, and then uh, they wake up the next morning and she like thinks about cutting his throat and she's like, nah, I think I'm in love with him. And uh, she doesn't cut his throat. And uh, that's how Sounds the like Master Chief lost his virginity. Um, something I never thought I would witness in the, in the, in the, in my life ever. You know, I asked my wife, she came home in the middle of the scene and I was like, Hey, what's a couple of like childhood icons to you? And she goes, 
Mickey and Minnie Mouse. And I was like, yeah, imagine if Mickey and Minnie had sex. How would you feel? And then she goes, that's gross. And I said, well, the Master Chief just had sex. And she goes, from Halo. And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, that's disgusting. I mean, but Mickey and Minnie did have sex. How do you explain Pluto? <laughs> <laughs> that's how you have Pluto, right? It doesn't make sense that there's a humanoid dog named Goofy I and a dog that is Pluto a pet came named out of Pluto. Goofy's butthole that was my bad that is uh this is this is why this show is not for kids you ruined it okay so we're beyond the sex which i don't even want to hear about how hot was master chief's butt because everybody (laughs) wants to know on hottest butts on air i mean when i think of master chief the game i think of all the butt shots that they Mm. use when they're scrolling up and down the armor they just stick to his can and uh, every scene is that. So I'm hoping the show did justice to that. Yeah, there was uh, there was no butt shots in this. You know, they, they try to keep it. It's still for kids, but just kids over the age of six. So I so mean, they go uh, full dong. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Uh, they go uh, <laughs> right point. You know, the, the, I guess this is just not the way I imagine the Master Chief F in the Covenant. You know, it's just was a. I was oh, expecting that's... it to. Oh, you see, that was a good joke, right? All right, but we can move on. Man, that's that's the type of uh, Skinamax show that they meant to make. <laughs> I, th- honestly, though, I have not heard one good thing about this series. That's why I have no interest in turning it on. So, like, is it have any redeeming qualities? Because I the, feel like it the, seems like it's trash. Yeah. So the action scenes are really cool, but they keep trying to like do this drum. Like they keep trying to throw like drama in there, and it it. it gets really tiresome and they have these two characters like one guy's named soren who's like a failed spartan the other person's this like woman named kwan whose dad is part of like the resistance groups they always talk about in the games and in the novels and uh they just they have entire like sections of these episodes dedicated to these two characters and they just it pulls you out of the 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 story but the uh but to answer your question no it's really not that great like i i don't hate it you know i I think i'm i'm like middle of the road right now they really need to show me something cool in episode the last few episodes here of the season to kind of change my opinion on it ign keeps rating it like sevens and eights and uh, i really don't understand their rating system because this show is not great you know i'm just watching it because i am hopeful that it will turn out good at some point i don't think that's gonna happen but Thank you for doing the Lord's work and watching this this horrible show so you can report back to us and let us know we don't need to waste our time watching it. Um, Wait, hold what on. What does that make it? What's that? What does that make it for like video game movies or TV products that have actually been good? Is it just the Sonic films at this point and like well, so, Old Street Fighter and the original Mortal Kombat? Is that like it <laughs> for good video game movies? A, the original Mortal Kombat is actually a pretty good movie. That's that's what I was saying. Those are okay. the good ones. Like yeah. I, I don't remember Street Fighter, but I feel like that's probably a pretty fun one with uh oh what's that guy John Claude Van Damme. John Claude Van Damme. Um, yeah. The first Sonic movie was great. I don't know about the second one. Yeah, I haven't seen uh, it yet. I watched Uncharted th- this past week. Nice. How many uh, times did he have to run off of uh, something that was falling or breaking? Wow, there was just a screen, huh? And he climbs up and around it. That happened a lot, like a ship sinking and he's having to <laughs> climb around well, the entire time. There were boats on helicopters. There was Nathan Drake on a... Uh, there's Tom Holland on a swinging light display. Uh, Mark Wahlberg blew something up. Yeah, there's just a lot, of, a lot of action and not a lot of story. But I do feel like it could have been good if it was a streaming series. I didn't dislike the movie, but it it was not long enough to really tell a good story, if that makes sense. Do you know, are they going to make a sequel to it? Yeah, this was actually like a success for Sony. A success in like what metric? I don't believe it even made back half of the money they spent. Um, it, it was, Okay, hold on. So it was like a three... I think it, it's sitting at like... Thir- Three million somewhere around there. I don't know what the budget no, it's, was. It's way higher than three million. You're you're probably thinking about like Uncharted. thirty or forty, maybe fifty, a hundred, maybe even a hundred million. Um, the day that I try to find something on Wikipedia, that's the day that they don't have this one. Uh, okay, yeah, so, so it's worldwide, the, it's at three hundred ninety-five million. 
Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, and its budget was 120. Okay, so, so that it, uh, I yeah, it, turned it, a profit. it probably yeah, probably turned, and that's I mean that's a decent profit, but I just yeah, I don't know. It didn't look good to me. That's why I didn't end up seeing it. Like I would have watched it if I had nothing to do. But yeah. it didn't look great. The only video game movie I'd actually like to see, and I think you saw it, I, I never got a chance to watch it, was the Alicia Vikander Tomb Raider. Oh, yeah. That was actually... It was not bad. It wasn't good. It, it was based off the first uh, Tomb Raider reboot, and they kind of went away from the supernatural element of the game and kind of made it more of like a biological warfare type thing. Oh, really? But was it was it like a good movie? or? Yeah, I mean, I I... I liked it. I think Alicia Vikander is a really great Tomb Raider. It feels a little more grounded than the uh, Angelina Jolie films. Yeah, I still liked those a lot, too. I know they weren't good, but I enjoyed them as a kid. Oh, they were good um, popcorn flicks. What's your favorite video game movie, if you had to choose like one? And don't say Mortal Kombat 95, because that's like the easy choice. <laughs> right. Uh, I like Sonic a lot, but if we're talking about like video game adaptations in general, I'm I'm really... You know, I know we disagree on this, but I really do find myself enjoying The Witcher. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's not a good show. Um, But <laughs> that's okay, plebeian, okay? We'll disagree here. We'll disagree. Uh, some of us are working with a Steam Deck, which actually puts us in a PC Master Race uh, category. <laughs> so, yeah, we don't actually work with you console plebs anymore. Mm. So I'm, I'm okay. sometimes doing that. So when we jump off this hype movie train, before we get to the news, what have you been gaming on? And I need to know that now. So been been a little busy with work this past week. So quit your I've job. Kinda, <laughs> yeah, I know. I just need to quit my job and play video games professionally. Um, I have been playing the. So I finished Tales of Arise, finished the last boss in that game. It was. Uh, I was expecting it to be kind of like Kingdom Hearts, you know, where you fight a boss and then you end up fighting like four or five different variations of that boss. Final Fantasy does the same thing too, by the way. But it was pretty straightforward. Like you fight a guy and then uh, you fight another person and then the game ends and you get your like anime closing. Um, and then you kind of open up and you can do game. You can skip through the credits, do a game plus mode, or you can go back to your game and play some post game content. So I've been playing a lot of the post game content. It's a uh, they call it other world, and I think that th these are all settings from other Tales games that you're wandering through. Because I you did encounter a character who I'm pretty sure is from another Tales game, but I'm not 100 percent positive on that. Um, mm. Anyways, th it's like the. Every time you pass into another world, the the enemy types are higher levels, so it helps you kind of grind your levels until you get to the right place to fight bosses and you're strong enough to do it. It's a it's a pretty cool thing. I don't know how far into it I'm going to get. I've just been playing it because I've only get like 20 minutes at night to check these things out. But uh you have any intention on eventually beating this game? I mean, I am like in a love affair with uh, Elden Ring right now. So, mm. and I, I'll, I have so much still more to add. So I'm going to wait and try to save it when I finish it. But all I will say is this is the gift that keeps on giving. I cannot believe, I thought I was like kind of getting close to the end of the game. Like there's a thing you need to do to finish the game. And technically yeah. I, I could finish the game very, very, very soon. But I'm having so much fun, and everywhere I go leads to like 50 other things. So long answer short, I don't know when I'm going to get back to Tales, man. I'd like to finish at some point, but I still got Elden Ring. Um, I still got Elden Ring on my Xbox. I still got Elden Ring on Steam Deck. So that's three Elden Rings I need to beat, not including New Game Pluses. And then I, after I finish all those Elden Ring playthroughs, maybe I'll do Horizon for Ben West. I mean, like, okay. I want right. to finish that game before the end of the year. I don't think it was that much fun, but I'm hoping my mind changes because, you know, I finished Zero Dawn and I feel very similarly about Forbidden West. Like, I, I wanted to like both of them a lot more than I yeah. have so far, but, you know, I'm still, I still want to give it the call try. It's, you know, it's a beautiful looking game and it's not like bad. It's just it's not. not you know, it's not actually that much longer than Z Zero Dawn. You know, when I well, Zero I went Dawn back was and, also ridiculously long too. Yeah, it's I don't know, like it. I guess it depends on how much like side quests you do. Like I think you could probably do the main story in this game. You know, in uh, Forbidden West, probably faster than you can do Zero Dawns if you're not doing any side quests. 
yeah, I but that's not how I want to play those games. Like I want to do I want to do side quests and I want to like run around. I want to play and have fun. I I mean I I'm not a completionist anymore, so like if there's a side quest that I don't want to do, I'll just skip it. But generally speaking, I do like complete side quests. So I, I hate yeah. it when games make it so it's like, well, there's three million of these. You know, it's like, okay, well, this sucks. Like, just make good ones. You know, like, yeah. make it so it's interesting. Like, I'm starting to do the quests in Elden Ring, and some of them are beyond frustrating, but they are all so wild and in some ways cool because without using an online uh, guide, I have no clue how on earth anybody would figure out how to do any of these quests. So they're really obtuse and there's hidden clues. It's like that game where like, if this would have come out when we were 10, I, this would have been a game people would have played for like five years. Cause without have the you, internet, people would have been like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, well this guy's dead. I'll try again and do something different next time. Have you been successful in completing the quests, or are you? Yeah, oh yeah, just... yeah. Most most of the quests don't have okay. um, super aggressive fail states. Like you can fail quests if you do certain things, but most of them are are pretty lenient. So okay. I've probably had a few, but there's not like a quest log. It's not like the game says you failed. And most of the time, even if you fail the quest, you still get the item. That's the one cool thing. It's not like Witcher Three where. I love that game, but I'll never forget having a failed quest, in, and it's in your log. They have completed, like, working on, and then failed at the bottom. And it just, just it sucks. Like, I hated you. having that I have a failed... of your failures. And there's nothing you could do. It's so annoying. It's like, well, then yeah. why, like, keep these in my quest log? Like, I don't mind when a game keeps a quest log like uh, Breath of the Wild, right? They have a little quest yeah. log in there. You can look at it. But there's no way to fail those quests. So right. it's like, okay, sure, yeah, keep the little log. Let me know where I'm supposed to go. What I hate is having a quest log where it's like, here's this giant map marker, do this. Oh, you didn't do it quick enough? Eh, it's gone, you know? And, now, and then remind me that I failed it the entire time. So. How does that feel? Enough about. I mean, it feels great. It feels like a... <laughs> Feels like my parents made me feel as a kid. <laughs> no, <laughs> just no, just me proud. My uh, my parents never did that to me. They're not your parents, Jank. <laughs> they were never Tell around. <laughs> they were never around. Um, but yeah, beyond Elden Ring, um, I played some of Iudian Chronicles. I believe we we oh, talked yeah. about how that was, last week. That? Rising. Uh it's Look. it's okay. It's the cool thing is it's free with Games Pass. It's I think fifteen dollars otherwise. It's on I think almost everything it's extremely basic it's a 2d side-scrolling action rpg with a very linear uh structure and you know you walk through a forest and do a quest then you go back to the main place and you turn the quest then you go out to the same forest where you go a little bit further for the next quest then you go back to the main place and turn it. that's the game it doesn't sound like it's very long so if i ever have time like it's it's fun enough to mm -hmm. play that i could imagine myself going back and finishing it because i think it's only three or four hours okay. but I can't say it's like a wow. I mean, it's not going to make it's it wouldn't like make my top ten. In, for this you're year. not hooked by it. No, I mean, no. It Trek to Yomi. Sadly, a lot of the Game Pass stuff has been a little bit on the weaker side recently, and yeah. uh, you know we'll get some of the PlayStation Plus news later on. But it is this is going to be a weird year. Well, our news section will we'll jump there in a second. But it's I think. You know, we talked about it last week a little bit, like the games that were supposed to come out. Some mm -hmm. stuff's already, a lot of stuff's already seems like it's changed. And yeah, Game Pass, it's still an incredible value. And I still love playing these games and trying these games out for free. But boy, they really need like a smash hit. Because that like feeling of like last year where it was Halo and Forza Horizon 5 and all these other, you know, Psychonauts 2. And there was like a good Game Pass game coming out anywhere from like every month to every two weeks. At its best. Yeah, it's, it seems like right now they're kind of relying heavily on indie games to carry them through to the next big AAA release. And, and, and in some ways, like in Tunic's case, that worked. Like Tunic yeah, was great. People right, loved it. Right. But like and some of them are fun. Yeah, it's just not. I don't know. It just needs a little bit more. Yeah, it's just like I don't think the old PS5 game Bug Snacks and, you know, sadly for them, it wasn't like they thought they knew it was going to be bad. But like mm -hmm. Trek to Yomi. And Iudian Chronicles just aren't great. You know, right. they're just like decent. They're they're sixes and sevens. They're the perfect Game Pass game that you want always to be on there versus buying because you're like, it's the Biomutant. You know, like I, I wish Biomutant oh, yeah. was on Game Pass. Like I want to try that out, but you've said it's bad, so I don't want to spend any money on it. 
Yeah, so, but that being said, like I do, I would, you know, when I have a time when I'm not playing anything else, I would like to go back to it and see if further in, if it gets any better. Yeah, I mean, but that that to me sounds like a Game Pass game. And um, yeah. do you have any other things you've been playing, or else let's get to some of these major major no no headlines. Let's jump into the headlines. Okay, before we get to the the two biggies, you had some smaller little updates about two games: one that got a date and one that got an update. You want to uh, want to talk to these talk to these boys about it and girls? Y- yes, and so, non-binaries. Um, hold on, I forgot what the release date was oh oh it's january Ew, i'll help it. you with that i got it all right um yeah so 505 games sent an update out about alan wake because they're doing a showcase and i think that's happening in a i thought it happened 505 games or is it next week no, or is it this week i think it's i don't know if it happened though we would have seen uh-huh. it in the news i don't remember the exact date of the conference but a spokesperson well, they don't they don't What's have up? a big they don't have a big lineup so it's one of those where okay here I'm finding the exact date for it to tell you uh just so you have it so everybody here listening in case it's before or it's case it's after okay so it happened it's tomorrow so if okay. you're listening to this it's already been out so whatever we say you can listen to what we're theorizing but it might already have happened okay so they have um they had a spokesperson come out and basically say hey we're the there is progress being made on Alan Wake 2. They showed off some concept art, but this is not going to be a game discussed at their conference. And they said Alan Wake 2 is due to come out uh, hopefully next year sometime. Mm. Um, so that, you know, they're making progress on that. A lot of people are speculating that there could be a control sequel uh being talked about at this conference but we'll you know that's that was such a big that, game so there's no way okay so real quick let's just talk about this rumor that there's a control sequel that they're going to announce the company that develops that remedy is mm-hmm. working on alan wake 2 yeah and the remakes for max Payne 1 and 2 with rockstar yeah i don't know if there's a third project but that's already a lot for a yeah. small team i do not think they're also going to have yeah control stuff yeah and i i mean well again that's all just speculation but yeah i don't i don't think they're going to be announcing because i think remedy had said that they don't want to just put out a cinematic for something you know they want to actually talk about something like alan wake when they actually have um you know gameplay to show off so that's happening um you know moving forward to uh, january 27th was the announced release date for the Dead Space remake. Are you still excited about this game or you can kind of do without it? What, what are your thoughts? Oh, I, I'm excited for Dead Space. But as I put in the text message, when you and I, um, you and I contacted each other, or when you brought these up, like these games to me are the same as like saying like when flying cars exist, we'll get this. Like, I just don't think that Dead Space is coming out in January. It totally possibly could. It is a remake from EA, a huge company that is going to have a horrible fiscal year if they don't start pumping out games at the beginning yeah. of next year. Because beyond their sports stuff, they don't really have a lot going. They, you know, they they drop the FIFA license. They're still like their EA yeah, that's Sports crazy Football to me, Club. Man. Yeah, yeah. I, there's so much to that. Neither of us are soccer watchers, so I don't I don't think we can really. It was something to do with corruption with FIFA and all these other things. But um, so yeah, beyond their their normal sports output, they don't really have anything lined up. You know, Dragon Age is not coming out anytime soon. Next Mass Effect, there was like that tease of Commander Shepard. I don't think that's coming out soon. So yeah, Dead Space could be on the verge of releasing. Mm-hmm. There's also the rumor that uh, the well, new Star have... Wars Jedi yeah, is coming out this say. year. Yeah, that's supposed to be. Allegedly, that's a coming out soonish. But, you know, before, because I don't want to spoil what we're going to talk about, but I'll at least uh, say it, Redfall and Starfield were also supposed to come out this year, and they were both dated. So just because Dead Space gave us some nebulous date next year, which who knows what the world will look like at that point, I, I just don't, I can't be excited. You know, if they told me June or July, yeah, I would be very excited. I'm really excited for that game. But I'm gonna pretty much wait till the two weeks before it comes out to get hyped. So do you kind of like hang out in shopping malls and when kids go sit on Santa's lap, you go and you you'd say he's not real. I mean, that's what I like to do. I do a yeah. mix of that, and then when they ask their parents for stuff like unicorns and stuff, I tell them, 
hey, dumbass, that's not a real animal, okay? <laughs> I use that exact verbatim and verbiage so they know that the world is real and rough and tough, okay? It was a deformed I don't want these horse. Kids. Somebody got a picture one time. Get over it. Uh, no, but I mean, it's. I'm just no, saying, I, I like, in this day you. and age, like... Uh, IGN does a tally of delays. They had one last year. I think it was like 23 games got delayed last year out of last year into this year. And I think they're already at 21 at this point for the year. Yeah. And some of these delays are like single player DLC, but you know, I mean, let's just talk about it. Xbox, uh, Xbox or Bethesda, you know, Bethesda now owned by Xbox announced that both Redfall, which I never thought was coming out this year. And, um, Starfield got delayed out of 2022 the and there's full schedule for the first half half yeah. of 2023. So who knows what that looks like now. One of the craziest things and I, I think I mentioned this last week is they normally like hitting those really memorable uh, dates, right? Like uh, Skyrim, I'll never forget was 11, 11, 11, right? That was their day. This was supposed to be 11, 22, um, 11, 11, 22 was what okay. Starfield was going to be. Uh, it got pushed and the the big rumor on the streets from all the gaming press journalist people was like they are trying to avoid what was going to be a cyberpunk which i i love no. cyberpunk we've talked about that on record but i guess it has issues is well, what i'm trying to good for them man i get, honestly like i would rather and i know we talked about this before but i would rather wait to have something be like a, a good experience as opposed to having it rushed out you know and they did that with halo and halo ended up being a really great game Hopefully, we don't yeah. have to wait like a year and a half for these uh, changes to occur, but still. I Well, I'm right there with you, but that just means, though, I can't be excited about games anymore, really, you know, till they come out. Like even Elden Ring, a game where I like from software stuff, I was not excited at all till like two weeks Well, you didn't even think before. it was going to get released. Like you kept I, saying yeah. it wasn't going to hit that. I thought it was going to get pushed. Because yeah. it kept there was it was essentially like vaporware in most people's mind. It existed, but they didn't talk about it since they announced it. And then like I'm looking at this list of other stuff like Everwild, the Perfect Dark game, Hellblade Two, State of Decay Three. Uh, you know, I mean, I love we we have like a lot of love for Microsoft on this podcast and the mm -hmm. Xbox because you know we're big we're big X X stands or whatever young kids want to call it. Um, but like it is. This is going to be a bummer of a year. And we talked about it earlier on. That was the rumor early on is that 2022 is going to be essentially a wash for them. Like nothing will be coming out. I'm yeah. hoping that rumor is wrong. It sure looks like it might be true because so, 2021 that, uh, was a pretty banger year for them. Right. Okay. So that, I mean, this actually leads me into something I wanted to ask you. So we're, you know, we, uh, we're probably going to have our like prediction uh, episode here for the Xbox yeah. Bethesda conference, but they Hopefully have early to, June. Yeah. But like I said, with Sony, um, they have to ha like Sony. We discussed like how they have to have God of War or something big come out. So does Microsoft now because they're yeah. big, uh, you know, their their flagship that was supposed to pave the way through the holiday season is no longer coming out. So I'm assuming that they're going to drop a Forza of some kind. But other than that, like they need to have something that is of substance. I mean, do they, though? I thought Forza like a, 8 was supposed to... Oh, wait, what are you talking about? Like, I, Forza 8 no, is supposed to come out, I think, but... Yeah, no, what I'm saying is, do either of these companies have to have anything released this year? It's just, I don't imagine it would be good for their earnings to not have something come out in the holidays. I, I, does it really move the needle for Microsoft when... I, you know, they sell a lot of games, but their main thing is Game Pass. And even for Sony... Does it really move the needle when they can't even keep PS5s on store shelves? Like, what I'm saying is, I agree with you. I It is bizarre, but we have moved into an era where, like, the years where Nintendo Switch has the least amount of games are its highest selling years, and people are buying Mario Kart 8 at, like, droves, a game that's now five <laughs> right. years old, you know? Right, yeah. So we're at a wild crossroad of, like, does it matter anymore? Like, yeah, you and me and the diehards who like want that new gaming rush, who want to have that fun, like, wow, this is so cool. Like I'm having a blast. Like I felt when I played Halo Infinite for the first time or when I turned on Elden Ring or, you know, even even Horizon, a game that I wasn't like super in love yeah. with the first one. I was excited to turn on Forbidden West, you know? I guess but, like in my mind, I can't even fathom a world where Nintendo, Microsoft and Sony don't put out anything for the holidays. 
I mean, but Nintendo's done that several times. So yeah, it would be strange if all three of them didn't, but it wouldn't be the end of the world because you're going to get Gotham Knights in October, which, you know, I, I was if it excited for that game. If it sticks to the release date. I, I think that one will. That was a two, that game was announced two years ago to come out. And it was like, I think it was dated for 2020 originally. Right, so now we're in is... 2022, two years later. Yeah, which is why I don't have a lot of faith in it being released when it when they said it will be. All okay, right, I'm just saying, okay, so even if it won't, like, though, does it matter? I'm sure Ubisoft will have to come out with a game, but even if it doesn't, right, even if none of these games come out, is it going to change gaming? Like, I mean, all it will be is what, a bad Christmas for new games? Like... I it'll mean, be yeah. the end. It'll be the it'll everyone's be the gonna end. walk out in the street. They're gonna throw their consoles down in the garbage, step on them, and say, "I am going to start knitting." This that's what's gonna yeah. happen. We're gonna have an epidemic of people knitting scarves. And then they're gonna hold hands and start singing "Kumbaya," okay? And the world's <laughs> gonna be a better place. No, I'm just saying though. Like we had those years when we were kids, and it didn't change gaming. The years when like. The Nintendo 64 was around. Like, there would be a game that would come out on the holidays. Maybe two. You know, it wasn't like there was like... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, there also weren't as many developers around then, though, making games. But there's going to be probably a thousand indies that come out between November and December, you know? So if you want games, like, there's always going to be them out there. I would love for there to be some major marquee titles. I'm just saying... Unless Sony is about to pull rabbits out of their hat or Microsoft has a bunch of things hidden, it doesn't look that great. And honestly, even Nintendo, like there's this rumor that they're like holding on to games and not releasing them till they need to, which I could see because there's been rumor about that Metroid Prime Trilogy remaster for like, what, three years now that it's done and that they just haven't decided to release it yet. So yeah, man, I, I could see something like that drop out this year if they don't need it because like xenoblade chronicles 3 the rumor was it was done last year and the fact that they moved it up from september to june or july makes me think that rumor was actually true like the game was already done they just didn't want to push it out i was surprised that it was even like being talked about because it does it seems like it wasn't that long ago that xenoblade chronicles 2 came out 2017 man still my favorite year for gaming like xenoblade chronicles 2 did not make it that but you know, it was that, yeah, the same year as Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey and uh, Rabbids and Nier Automata and Persona 5. And man, I can't even, I think that was the same year as uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, uh, Cuphead. Didn't like, that, that year was wild. That wasn't Final Fantasy 15 came out that year too, didn't it? No, that was 2016. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, because that's the year we started the podcast was the year that Switch came out. That's right. We all finished it's Final what Fantasy brought 15. us together, the Final Fantasy. Yeah. I mean, there's always rumors that Final Fantasy 16 could do a last minute drop this year. I don't believe that either, but that yeah. is the current rumor right now is that it's coming out. So I don't know, man. I, I The Redfall thing doesn't surprise me at all because essentially we had, what, seen a CG trailer and they had said mm-hmm. summer 2022. Like, yeah. there's been nothing about it. Starfield was surprising because like what's their date going to be now like 323 probably you know like there there's nothing like it's probably gonna be something like that like 223 23 yeah I I would love it if they gave up trying to do their meme dates and did 420 instead (laughs) has nothing to do they've been doing like 11 11 11 uh you know I can't think of the other ones but they've had a lot of these like they love these dates right and that's 11 11 22 and it's like 420. <laughs> they don't even put the, the deer on a, it because they just want to be funnier. And the, the the game cover is just like an alien with a rocket ship smoking out of its uh yeah. in its mouth, you know, like a like a like, like a joint. <laughs> the real gaming date that we're all waiting for is 42069. So the year 2069, <laughs> when 420 arrives, I can't even imagine what types of games are gonna People release gonna then, lose man. Their minds. The number one year in games ever. 69. 2069. <laughs> um okay so enough about uh bethesda um and we're gonna talk about all of our predictions for the xbox showcase which after this i have like i don't even know anymore um i want to talk to you about that sweet sweet playstation plus insanity that they're doing where they've created three tiers what was playstation plus and playstation now is now playstation plus essential which is normal playstation plus playstation plus 
Extra, I want to say. Yes. And PlayStation Plus Premium. I'm literally looking at a chart for it right now, but it's so confusing. I never can remember which one's which. Which and they've um, they've started announcing some of the games that are going to be released on it. Uh, the cool thing was for the premium tier, which is 120 bucks a year. Can I, can I just stop have, you for a minute? This is ahead, stupid. Yeah. This is like a Disneyland pass. Like, do you want the gold deluxe, the silver, bronze? You want a, a bronze double double? Like, uh, this is this is dumb. This is dumb. Just you want make, a double like, Dutchman or yeah, uh, do you bronze? Want a, do you want a Dutch oven? It's just you, you tell me, man. They should make like a. Do what Games Pass do. A Games Pass Ultimate, regular Games Pass. That's all they need to do. But this is this is stupid. Like this is like really why there's no need for any of this. So I agree with you. That's needlessly confusing. I will say after this was announced, because I thought it was probably the dumbest sounding service ever. The games have not made me hopeful, but the service is itself, this is a better lineup than I thought, not by much, mind you, because, you know, I had talked to you earlier about it that I might subscribe if it had a lot of good PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 titles. Those aren't there. Those are not there at all. It's got they, Ape uh, Escape, man. I mean, that's, yeah, it's got Ape, Ape Escape. Escape. Two. But I will say Sony did something awesome where that even if you don't pay for any of these services, if the games come to the uh, PlayStation Plus Premium, from what I've read, you can download them if, you, if you've purchased them already. So I purchased a bunch of these games for Vita and PS3 back in the day, like Ape Escape. So it sounds like I just get to buy the, or just get to have them you, on my console. Do you console. know that for sure, though? Is that like, cause, because you bought them on Vita, do you have to ha have bought them on the PlayStation? Does it matter? I mean, it's the PlayStation Store. So that's, uh, that is what I'm expecting do you know what i mean like this this whole yeah. thing is so wild and insane and confusing that i'm not going to declare it working till the day you know it releases in the middle of june and i know right. that it actually works i think the real takeaways though are like it sounded horrible when they announced it last month because they wouldn't even show any games um there was rumors that these other games were going to come out those games weren't part of this thing so that's kind of even more of a buzzkill. Uh, but, or, or no, maybe that maybe they are Tekken two, I guess was one of the rumors and it's there, but I will say, you know, I mean, all things considered, it's a meh lineup, but it's not, I mean, if you're going to, if you want to pay 12 bucks a month, I mean, it's, you could do worse things with your money. I mean, right. Netflix is pretty much hot garbage nowadays. You, you <laughs> pay 18, it's $18 a month. A month yeah. Pretty much for like shows that probably cost them a hundred dollars to make or something. I, I don't even know what their budgets are. Maybe they paid it all to like the diversity coach or something on one of these movies, but it's like ridiculously like we just watched the uh, Rebel Wilson uh, movie where she goes to high school. Did you see the trailer oh, for that? No, I mean, is that a Netflix? Yeah, it's original? a Netflix original. Uh -huh. It's like uh, you know, like one of those high school comedy, you know, like girly films. And I grew up with three older sisters, and in our household, Clueless was very very popular. Oh, I watched Clueless yes. a lot, right? This movie doesn't hold a candle to any of those. It has like a few jokes, but right after that, I showed my wife Clueless. And she's like, immediately within five minutes, she's like, this is way better. You know, it's yeah. like, it's just, that's what that stuff is. So yes, PlayStation Plus, whatever you want to call this restructuring isn't good, but it's, I don't know, it's, could be worse is literally my thoughts. Like, I'm not going to subscribe to it, but good on whoever wants to pay 12 bucks a month, roughly less than that, like probably 10 bucks a month. Actually, yeah, 10 bucks a month exactly to be able to play two hour demos of uh, WWE 2K and 22 Uncharted and Thieves Legacy. And yeah, and you get three hour demos for for Ben West and Cyberpunk 2077. So it's like, I mean, the whole program's pretty lame. Like it's not great, but hey, if you're getting a PS5 right now, for ten bucks a month, you can get Returnal, um, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Demon Demon Souls, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the Ghost of Shima Director's Cut. You know, a bunch of actually pretty good, or if not great, PS5 games. You know what I mean? So like, I think that's not too bad. If no, you I want mean, that, there, then you. There are some good games in this list. It's just not like. Most of the good games on this list are things that I've played already. Well, yes, if you had a PlayStation 5, like both of us, both of us do, and if you have been purchasing games, which is 
The craziest thing is that's what Sony wants. They want their cake and they want to eat it too. They want people to purchase games for $70. But this is for like the person who only got the games on sale, right? That's what I, I think this is for. Then yeah, I mean, this isn't bad for that kid who never gets to buy the game when it comes out and gets the game for like 10 or 15 bucks. This is a better idea because they'll get more stuff. So yeah. yeah, I don't know, man. Like I, Like I said, it could have been worse. I think it's okay, you know, meh at best. Like, it's it's still missing. Like, the fact that, like, Last of Us 2 isn't even on this list, and that's, like, a yeah. now a two-year-old game is, like, okay, Sony, it's first party. Just put all your first, all your older first party stuff on there. Um, you know, there's no, like, big third party. Like, I was expecting at least Final Fantasy VII remake to be on there yeah. because... That's old by now. Yeah, was they like, oh, okay. They have 15 on there, the Royal Edition. Yeah. But. yeah, but that's on everything. That was also free with your PS5 if you played oh. for PS Plus for like 30 bucks a year or whatever. So, yeah. yeah and honestly, they're like back catalog blows. Like, I'll just be upfront and honest. Like, be, they're only adding, like, it looks like six original PlayStation games. And every other game on this list was part of the PS2 games on PS4. If you remember, they re released and resold. PlayStation yeah. 2 games on PS4. Are are all these games coming out at the launch of the service, or are these things that are going to slowly be trickled in after so many weeks? I, I believe this is the launch lineup, what we're okay. looking at right now. Um, I, I can't commit that for a fact. Like I don't know 100% that that's the case. And you got to remember, there's stuff like all the PS3 games are still streaming only. You can't download them. So... It's it's got a lot of work to do if people are going to actually like think it's equivalent to Game Pass, but we're talking about a world where most people have upgraded, including myself, to Nintendo's expansion pack online, which isn't a great deal. So I don't know, man. It's the way it is. Like I said, yeah. people are paying twenty bucks a month for Netflix. Yeah, even more if you pay for four K. And how much good stuff do they even have on there? You know, I think my, the, my yeah. favorite thing we watched on Netflix recently was Old Enough, a show about Japanese children who have to do tasks on their own. Oh, there were only geez. 11 episodes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw a trailer for that. It looked, and, looked interesting. And that show's 30 to 40 years old. Like, they, it's still on TV, but it's like a 40-year-old show that's been on. So it's like, that's the best thing. Like, I'm hoping Stranger Things Season 4 comes in there and, like, revalidates the fact that I've been paying for Netflix for pretty yeah. much a full year and not, yeah, exactly. you know... I watched whatever that Gal Gadot, The Rock, uh, Ryan Reynolds film was. I saw that, you know. Do you remember what that's called? Uh, Red Notice. Red Notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay, your favorite yeah. movie ever. I've been watching um, Vikings Valhalla. I mean, that's pretty good, it's, but it doesn't justify $20 a month, but it's not bad. But, I mean, you could pay for all the comedians you don't like on Netflix to be on there if you give them 20 bucks a month. I, I mean, know, otherwise, right? how are those comedians who nobody actually goes to see their shows? How are those people going to get specials on Netflix? <laughs> yeah, you got to give them a million plus dollars. Live? I just no, want I more mean, Jeff Foxworthy, more Jeff Foxworthy. Uh, Billingville. I need more blue collar comedy tour. I only support uh, subscriptions that have Larry the Cable Guy as nine different <laughs> shows <Yeah>. or whatever. <laughs> Didn't they do like some crazy deal with uh, Adam Sandler where they did like some 15 yeah. movie deal with him for they Netflix? They did the same thing with, uh, what's his name, Mike Myers from Austin Powers. And I guess his movie that hit Netflix was like a, was really terrible. It wasn't a movie. It's a TV show. It's called uh, The Penta... Pentabird or something. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 I tried watching it. It's, it's not very good. Um, and it's also not very funny. But yeah, I mean, Netflix is what it is. This looks like it's going to be one of those. So if you're telling me we've got like th 100 million people in the US paying for Netflix, I think there will be 50 million people plus who pay for the premium version of yeah. so this. I, I could see myself if they had day one releases, I could see myself paying for this service oh of course if they had day one releases who wouldn't it would be 10 bucks a month for that but yeah. they've already said up front they're not doing that they're not going to do day yeah. one so yeah. like the best you're going to get are two-year-old games which oh. you and i already have this isn't for you and i mm -hmm. the one thing i was hoping they were going to do which with the steam deck and all the other ways i have to play it's not really useful for me anymore but i was hoping they were going to have a huge back catalog of ps1 and ps2 rpgs see that would have been nice like i i if yeah. they would have like teamed up with square somehow and yes. ended up putting a bunch of old uh 
RPGs and you know may- maybe PS2 and PS3 content on there. Like I could see myself, I could see myself diving into something like this. I think this, and you know, I'll, I'll watch. I'll be disproven next week when S- Sony will buy Square. But I feel like this disproves <laughs> the uh, rumor that Sony is going to buy Square only because they are not on this list like no. at all besides Final Fantasy 15. Like yeah. they, there is not one. Let me see if there's any back catalog games before I say this. Yeah, there's not one back catalog game that is Square Enix on this. I wish we had a you know contact us if we're wrong, but I'm looking over this list and not Rogue Galaxy. That's Sony Inter- Inter- uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment. Um, you know, Siphon Filter, Wild Arms Three. Yeah, there's no old Square games. Yeah. So, like they, yeah, they did like no work. There's some newer stuff like Guardians of the Galaxy and um, Final Fantasy 15, and I'm sure there's something else on this list that I'm not seeing. But yeah, I mean, all truth be told, like they, there's nothing on there. So I don't think Sony is, has bought Squaresoft at least yet or Square Enix or else I think they would try to kick off this service with a bunch of those to get people really hyped. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, will you, what would they have to do besides day one titles? Cause we know it's never going to happen. What would they have to do to get you to sign up to this thing? So I, I mean, you know, like you said, with the RPGs, I'd be interested in RPGs, but I mean, more so just looking back at here, like they have PS3 titles. Cool. I would want to see like, you know, there's a lot of great PlayStation 2 titles out there, but you're not seeing a lot of that on here on this list. So I don't know. They they just have to have more of a variety of of things on here. Because like I said, a lot of the stuff I've played already. So at this point, what is my, what is my motivation for? paying for something like this i mean you you got to support them i mean are you giving your monthly checks to them and writing for ties and offerings to sony because i mean i do that every month i write in the memo no i write him a 150 dollar <laughs> check i've uh, actually been, sony yeah i've actually been diverting my electricity bills to sony so okay good yeah i write yeah. And I, when the memo feel i don't know if i should do it for pastoral care of their studios or for ties <laughs> and offerings so i generally do yeah. general ties and offerings um no i mean I don't know what to say. Like we knew pretty much the second they announced this, it was not going to be great. The second that they started getting in front Mm -hmm. of him being like, we're not doing day one. The coolest thing for me is the fact that it sounds like, and I will confirm when this happens, that the PS licenses I purchased on PlayStation 3 and the, uh, on PlayStation 3 for PS1 and PSP games and potentially, and I don't think PS2, that I'll be able to use those licenses again. That is cool to me. Like the fact that, you know, Nintendo hopefully. always, yeah, hopefully Nintendo always like sells me these, di- this digital content and then they close their services down on this console. I don't have anymore. Mm-hmm. And I, all of it's useless. All of it becomes useless. Y- so you know it would be nice to get those back. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that, that's the hope, right? Cause Nintendo, I mean, that's what makes me think that it might not happen is because Nintendo is notorious for doing that. <clears throat> and who, who's to say Sony, who loves their money, is not going to be like, well, you purchased this once, but if you want it on this console, you're going to have to purchase it again. But so that's the weirdest thing about this. I don't believe these classic games, besides the PS2 ones, because they're on the PS4 store. I don't know if these original PS games or PS1 games are going to be on the store to purchase. So that, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we don't know. It launches, it's and the rollout is really bizarre. It rolls out in Asia first in May, and I think we're like the third region, which maybe stuff has changed since the beginning, but it used to be that like U.S. would get stuff first or yeah. like Japan first and then U.S. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, North America is June 13th. Uh, Asia, excluding Japan, is May 24th. So it's like weird. So Japan is ju- like June 2nd. After oh. Asia, like so, Hong Kong, or I don't, I don't know Isn't where in Asia Sony they're talking a Japanese about. Japanese company, or is that they, they used? I mean, they technically Sony is, but Sony, the video game brand, the the that part of their company is based in Europe now. That's oh, why their okay. CEO and all those guys like Jim Ryan. That's why they closed most of their. Um, but again, which makes it even more wild, is Europe gets it last. They're getting it in tw- June twenty third. Yeah. Australia, New Zealand, and Europe. So it's like. I everything is weird about this whole thing. I I don't understand it. I'm hoping it comes out and people like it, but I also just I hope the fanboys, the Sony fanboys like calm down because this is 
this isn't a system sell. This is like, uh, oh, you got a PlayStation and you, you don't buy games? Okay. Yeah, you can pay <laughs> 10 bucks a month, you know, for this thing. Because, yeah. I, I mean, this is for that person. This is for the kid whose dad doesn't want to buy a bunch of games and they'd rather just subscribe 10 bucks a month. This yeah, is, I can see that. Yeah, so I don't know, man. I wish it the best, but uh, this is out of all the services... The one I, I do not know if I will, I, they're going to have to do a lot of work before I engage with it. Whereas yeah. like Nintendo just had to start being like, hey, we're giving you Mario Kart tracks and here's a decent N64 game. So I was like, okay, more Mario Kart tracks, more N64 games. Uh, my niece and nephew can play video games with my dad because I have a family plan. Sure, I'll do it. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's fine. It's not Sony that much money, 50 bucks a year. Though. No, oh, yeah. I mean, well, well. I mean, I hope they get Animal Crossing on Sony platforms. That's what I'm expecting. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what, what I want is my want. niece and, and nephew to be able to play Animal Crossing with my dad on PlayStation Five. Why can't you do that, Sony? <laughs> <laughs> I would love it if that was our podcast spiel. Like, we know nothing about games. We're like, I just want to play Halo. I bought my PS Five. I don't know why I put the disc in. It doesn't work. <laughs> the disc won't fit in my Game Boy. I got a GameCube recently, and I've been using this new Halo disc that I got. It won't I don't understand work. it. I've been smashing this N64 <laughs> car into this Game Boy. I don't get why it's not playing. Why? Oh, dude. Um, okay, man. I think we covered all Wait, the bases. We what? did not. I have a little oh. uh, quizzy oh. quiz for you. Oh, Retro Rally Roundup. Yeah, <laughs> bom, 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 bom. Here comes the music at some point. All right. I have found the top 10 uh, highest selling games on eBay. All right. Okay, and this isn't counting those like crazy Mario third edition copies that we talked about where there's like scummy crime stuff going on, right? No, sir. No. Okay, because I, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? The WADA yeah. rated. They're actually being investigated right now. They should be. I think there was something really weird and fishy yeah, about that. They're like causing inflation and in game prices. Um. All right. Are you ready for this? Let's see. It, it's out of oh, ten. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's I'm gonna hundo percent this. Let's see how close you can get. Okay. I want you to keep in mind that none of these games. Are under exist thousand dollars. <laughs> I would love it if instead you said none of these games exist. Not I made up these real. games. I made up all these game titles and they don't. They aren't on eBay. What do you think they would be worth? Uh, so real quick, one more time because I was thinking of jokes hard. You said none of these games are under one thousand dollars. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's not super surprising. All right. So at number 10, we have a complete in-box copy of Final Fantasy II on the Super Nintendo. This is not what it's selling for right now, but this is what this is the highest that it has sold for. Okay. Um, Cleat in box. Can you tell me the year it sold? Uh night oh, sorry. No, it doesn't uh, they don't tell? No, I don't know what year it sold. Just I'm because sorry. if it's recent, it was probably much, much higher than like 10 years ago. So this um, this list is from 2021. Okay, yeah. Okay, my guess is for Final Fantasy II, fourteen hundred dollars. I'm gonna guess ball. You're gonna have to like round down or round up for me, man, because there's no way okay. I'm gonna get. Dollar I'm gonna come announced. back and answer the. I'm gonna give you the answers after we go through the games. Okay. Okay. A Super Nintendo copy of Batman Forever. Batman Forever. Wow, I didn't even realize that was on Super Nintendo. Complete like, in looking. box. If it's more than Final Fantasy two, fifteen hundred bucks, I guess. Because you, okay. these are order from lowest to highest, right? Yes. All right. Next one: Super Mario Brothers two. Oh, complete a box. Twenty one hundred. Okay. All right. Are, next uh, one. He's Putting Kazoo the price down to sell on eBay right now every time there's silence. Absolutely. <laughs> He's trying to get what people would pay for it. All right. Kazuna Encounter on the... Uh, I think this is a Super Nintendo game. A, a Famicom or something? Or Super C Famicom? Let's see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, I've never even heard of Kazuma Encounter. Kazuna Encounter. Hold on. Let me look. This is one that I was curious. I was going to Google earlier, and I forgot to do it. 
Kazuna Encounter Console. Neo Geo. Oh, I don't know. 2400 bucks? I've never heard of this game, so I wouldn't even... Kazuna Encounter. All right. Are you ready for the next one? Mm-hmm. All right. A Nintendo Campus Challenge 1991. Campus Challenge. Uh oh, I think I know which one you're talking about. Four thousand eight hundred. Okay. Oh, hold on. Bye. All right. Next one. Here we go. Birthday Mania on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Uh, five thousand dollars. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know these games. All right, next one. Stadium events on the NES. Uh oh, wow, that's actually twelve thousand dollars. Okay. Three. All right, Nintendo World Championships. So this is an exclusive cartridge that was given oh, out. Oh wow, that was the one the I was saying. Fourteen thousand dollars. Okay, that was the one I thought the last one was. All right, Super Mario Brothers, the original. The original Super Mario Brothers. Uh, eighteen thousand dollars. Okay. All right. I feel one. like Lucille Bluth from Arrest Development. What's a banana cost, Michael? Ten dollars. <laughs> All right. No cl- this one is on the Atari 2600 also. It's called Gamma Attack. Uh, it means, oh, it's Gamma like a grandma. So it's a grandma attacking grandma you. Attack, yeah. <laughs> gamma, Gamma Attack. Um, I, $20,000. All right. You want to see how off you were? Let's, let's go to the sure, top let's of the go, Let's go. I really don't know. All right. I was- Final Fantasy II, the most expensive copy of the game, sold for $2,100. You said wow. 1400 I was pretty close, actually. Yeah, I didn't know that yeah, all. You were, you were in the neighborhood. All right, Batman Forever on Super Nintendo. Uh, you said $1,500, and this one sold for $4,200. Wow. What were people smoking that they wanted well, to pay was, $4,200? I forgot to mention it was also a limited edition version, but still. Okay. Well, what I mean, it wouldn't have changed my mind. I don't know anything about this game. So oh, go ahead. All right, Super Mario Brothers 2. Uh, you said $2,100, and... This game, this one sold for ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars? Are you sure this wasn't the scammy Wada thing? That game was like pretty, like nope, everywhere. The, it is. Th- this is a different version. It's an Asian version of the game that sold for that much. Oh, sh- you got to tell me that. I should have called out variants. My bad. All right, uh, Kazuna Encounter. You said twenty four hundred. This yeah, one sold for off. thirteen thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. Okay, Nintendo Campus Challenge 1991. You said $4,800. This one sold for $20,000. Okay, I'm going to get really off here. Number five, Birthday Mania. So these were cartridges that you wrote to Atari and you got on on your birthday. So there were a very limited number of these made. So they weren't sold in stores. It was a, a write to us and we'll ship you a copy of it. And this one, if you can find one on the internet, uh, this this one right here sold for thirty thousand dollars. Okay. All right, you ready for stadium events? I was this pretty is much one there. That people are still crazy about finding today. Um, if you're a completionist, like this is a must-have, but you end up like having to spend a small fortune on it. So you said twelve thousand dollars. This one <laughs> sold for forty-two thousand dollars. I guess I was thinking twelve thousand because I was thinking the world was still rational. I forgot what everything. No, forgot no, that milk sir. is trillion dollars no today. Here. So wait until you hear about Nintendo World Championships. All right, the nineteen ninety cartridge for Nintendo World Championships. You said sold for fourteen thousand dollars. This one sold for one hundred thousand dollars. Well, okay. Can I get one of those and sell it so I can have a house? Right. Uh, all right. Super Mario Brothers original. You said eighteen thousand. This one sold for one hundred thousand one hundred dollars. Wow. Okay. That's ridiculous. All right. Gamma Attack. Our final game on here. You said twenty thousand. This game sold for five hundred 
thousand. Five hundred thousand dollars. No but, way. But only one copy of this game exists. Really? Yeah. Uh, that's insane. Yeah. Insane completing price right now is uh three hundred bucks. For what? For Gamma Attack. Are you sure? Like this, it, uh, from what I understand, there's only one copy of this game in existence. Is it? On I mean, eBay? I just was on PriceCharting.com and it says it was two oh nine. Was last seen two years ago. Um, oh. There's one that's forty five bucks. Gamma Attack. Um, I maybe we're talking about different versions of Gamma Attack because this yeah, is possible. I think yeah, you're maybe I'm... talking about like a weird special version of Gamma Attack. Because I'm looking for it on eBay right now, and there are zero listings for it. Yeah, I mean, I the ones that I clicked didn't have a listing either. That's why it's so weird. But I'm like yeah. trying to see if I can find what you're talking about. Because I opened up another list of like Gamma Attack. Yeah, they say between twenty and fifty thousand bucks. But I don't know, man. I, I everybody's insane. If you got five hundred thousand dollars or whatever, please mail me a check. Uh, I'd love to be able to buy a house. <laughs> I don't know what you want. I'll probably do it for you. <laughs> it's just please nothing sexual. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. um, but okay, my bro. This has been a dirty episode. I'm gonna have to put explicit warning Ugh. on this. Okay. Um, our 69 year plus non-binary friends who listen to this are not gonna be very happy with us. Ninety percent of our all. audience. Not at um, all. Um. Okay, my bro. Well, till next time, we're almost we're almost hit entering June, and we get, then we'll have to start discussing predictions for both the Xbox Bethesda Showcase and Summer Night whatever live it is. Summer, Jeff summer thing. game stuff, yeah. Summer Games Fest, yeah. It's not opening night live anymore. It's probably Summer Gaming Showcase Showdown. I don't know, whatever, whatever loser stay, nerd stay of summer. Junk. Yeah, it's, it's... I mean, he's he's a nerd, okay? I don't do any of that stuff. I'm a really cool guy, okay? Oh, what song are we? Are, what what are we leading out with today? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it, bro. I've never used anybody else's copyrighted materials. Okay, just let's get it on. Since we got to be here